Hello, it's me, Matt, con warning. This video contains some spoilers and it contains some opinions. Because we're reviewing Alan Wake, a game that came out in a long time ago. I think it was like 2001. Nope. Hang on, I had the wiki up for a few seconds ago, but I don't care anymore. It is like uh, 25 to 1 and I'm very tired, but I just finished the game. And honestly... There were a lot of times where I was bored, but that's that's an overall kind of thing. So let's get to the nitty gritty to start with. First of all, the game itself, gameplay wise, nice and easy. Uh, you you find the enemies, well the enemies find you. You use your torch or your uh, support equipment to get rid of the the darkness of the enemies, and then you shoot them. If you're using something like the flashbang or like the environmental stuff, you can probably get rid of them and save some ammunition. And that's kind of cool. I liked that premise, but it could have been implemented a little bit better. Because for the first five, six hours of the game, I spent going, why is my torch terrible? And then they give you one when it's a bit late. <laughs> they give you a heavy duty torch and then they upgrade that one almost instantly in the next hour. So I there was there was no balance in that section. And they did stop. And I felt like the first three hours was more of a tutorial because it introduced like something new every level. I mean that's not the worst thing in the world, but it was kind of annoying. They couldn't have um, dropped these things a little bit sooner. I mean, flashbang grenades are not something you come across in the wild, but for some reason, the forests of Bright Falls are very well armed with revolver ammunition, shotgun shells, um, rifle, like hunting rifle and ammunition, and flares. Flares are understandable because you're in a forest, so you need light. Flares make light. They also make lots of fire and blah, blah, blah. And then flashbang grenades. For some reason, this small town in the middle of God knows... You have to get on a ferry to get to it, so it's... Unless this town is literally built on an armament factory, I'm calling some bull on this one. But there's some... I've got lots of little nitpicks about this game, which I will go over and waffle about a couple of times in this video, and I don't know how long it's going to take me, and let's just get on with it. So Alan Wake is a third-person, semi-horror, supernatural, action, shooter, mystery thing, my bob. And when you're playing the game, you will explore this lovely little town of Bright Falls, which seems to have this weird vibe about it. But th this vibe doesn't take long to make itself known, especially as the first couple of people you meet, A, is the radio station horse, and B, the uh, crazy fangirl who is working in the diner. And then the crazy woman that will not go down a dark corridor, and then the creepy woman in black and a veil, so this contains spoilers, I should say. Did I say that? I probably did. I am very tired, and I'm functioning on very little sleep, as always. And the coffee's just sort of... Anyway... So this is kind of like a tired review. Um, and then you you get these keys to a cabin where you're meant to, like... Re Alan Wake is meant to relax and try and work through his writer's block. And then shit goes wrong. His girlfriend, Alice, is kind of afraid of the dark, has the phobia of the dark. I don't know what the actual phobia is called. I will probably find it somewhere. And you turn that cat cabin light on. That's fine. You go in, have a little argument, because there's a typewriter in there, and he's like, I don't really want to think about writing right now. It, it's something that's bothering me. And he flips out, leaves the thing, and then the lights go out, and then... all hell breaks loose. Uh, his girlfriend looks like she's drowned in the, 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 the lake surrounding the uh, cabin. You wake up in a car crash almost instantly after... And you are then put in a world where everything's trying to kill you because it's dark outside. Oh yeah, 
This is a game of like light and dark, and they try to use a lot of horror tropes where there's a lot of tense-ish moments where I didn't really feel the tense, although I did have music on in the background while I was playing. I did have enough, I have had it quiet enough just to allow me to explore the game in depth with my head and whatnot. And I found that the game, while it did have an atmosphere, I could not get into it and I'm not blaming like the background music I'm blaming the game for constantly using random camera angles and slow motion unnecessarily you'd take out two enemies and the last enemy would always be a slow motion kill I don't know why this what happened quite often when you either shooting um Shooting some the last person, which is fine. Like, do that every now and then. Don't do it every fight. Or the camera would suddenly pan out and show, like, an ambush. And this would happen about 15 times a level. It would get very annoying very quickly. I'm just, All I have is a bunch of downsides to this video oh, don't worry i do have a couple of good points that i did enjoy about the game but i have a lot of bad to get out these uh constant slow motions ruined the flow of the gameplay and the constant panning out the camera really jarred it and pulled me out of the inf like the getting into it in game third person action games the cinematic camera should only really be used a little sparing, kind of sparingly. Not every other motion or movement, only to point out important things or important things you should see. Apparently everything is important in Alan Wake, and so you have to watch every single moment of those cameras. And to me that was pretty much one of the most jarring points of the game. Um, I haven't talked about the... In, environment. The environment is a small town on an island with a lot of, like, traditional building stuff, uh, building construction sites, and as in logging cab log cabins, a lot of logging, because the town is built to be like, it sounds like a holiday town where people who live there live there because it's a small town, it's a quiet town. They do their job and usually probably looking for the logging industry or the local areas, like the cafe and whatnot. Or it's a tourist town for people to come in and relax and get away from the rest of the world. <laughs> and that's cool. I like the place they've chosen. The uh, level design, a bit iffy at times, especially when it comes to these weird maze moments where it doesn't... Even though you had a little indicator on the top, it doesn't really help all the time. <laughs> it's, it's like um, the Warframe minimap, where it tells you which direction you go in, but you could have several corridors that basically screw with the minimap and to the indicator. Although the indicator's gotten a lot better in Warframe, in Alan Wake, it's... Um, Usually quite direct, but it doesn't allow for bins and turns. Another thing I didn't notice was there is a massive collectathon within the game, as if they're trying to add a, a, a an ounce of play, replayability in it, when the game itself does not really have replayability. I went through that game once, and by the end of it, I was I was bored, and I I wanted it done. Because near the end, it started, like, trying to stretch out a massive climax to the point where this epic moment at the actual end, I didn't know whether it was the end or not, and it turned out it wasn't. There was more to it, which became extremely anticlimactic. I am trying to keep it as vague as possible, but this is specifically all I can say about that bit. I, I the, the rapport of the game, it started off strong. It gave you a very strong, oh my god, this is happening. Why is this happening? And then it was a constant roller coaster. Usually, you give the player a, 
a gradually more progressively, um, how to put it, aggressive hills of excitement to like bring up, up and down and get them, keeping them going and make them interested. What this did in instead in this game, it brought them up and kept them up there for as long as possible till it basically was almost worthless. Especially in the last hour of the game, they they tried to like push the upward part of it, and it was a flat surface. I had to push myself forward to keep going on that game. I was ready to give up and just end it and review it as I was. But no, I told myself I should have finished the game before I review it. Because that's how you properly do it, in my opinion. Uh, gameplay itself, I did speak about it earlier. The gameplay is nice and simple. Uh, while it tried to have an action-adventure feel, it also tried to have a slightly horror-survival trope feel. The only downside is that the tension that you'd usually get with a horror-survival is that you would have very limited ammunition. You would have... You tried to control the fights itself and try to avoid confrontation. Unfortunately, in this game, confrontation happens every two to three minutes or three to four minutes. Or there'll be some small gaps where you're meant to fix a puzzle. And then you'll find a part of the puzzle and you'll get attacked. That's fine. But when it leans so far towards the action, it kind of doesn't work with the um, the horror feel of the game that it's meant to be. Especially as there is an abundance of ammunition, flares, and torch batteries everywhere. I literally was vomiting up torch batteries and I could not use them fast enough. There was that many in the game. Because I could easily, sparingly, use the focus beam of the torch and then just bring it back and run kite the people and run backwards and just let them walk through my light the dodge mechanic of the game didn't always kind of work it was like it was a bit specific in when you're meant to do it and it never always choreographed itself correctly the guys either attacked you super 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 quickly or they were so slow that you did it too early and to me, that was a pain in the ass. Yeah, I understand. You meant to vary your your enemies out. But, eh. well, yeah, I should talk about the enemies now. So you had your standard, bog standard enemy, which did an average amount of damage and then did average, needed average amount of light, darkness taken off them. So you were stood there going, come on, come on, come on, bang, 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 and done. Nice and easy. Then you had your super fast guys. Uh, then you had your fast guys. Who were like, come on, come on, come on, bang, bang. Nice and easy. Didn't take much damage. But they were harder to dodge. Which I can understand. So using the flares became very... Made those fights a little bit trivial. Which is the best thing for it. I was playing on normal. Because I didn't have the, the hardest difficulty available. And to be honest, I'm going to uninstall the game. As soon as I can. I might get a bit of gameplay to just nope. record... Or I might just put a still image, depending on how much I do not want to play the game again. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Whereas, there was a super, super fast man. He was a pain in the ass. He, he actually made a fight interesting, except the minute you looked at him with the light, he ran away and made my boost useless. I think that's probably the idea of him. Then you've got your your bulky guy with either a shovel or an axe. He was interesting because he took a full six shots of revolver ammo or two shotguns to the face or two rifle shots. And he made the game interesting because he was often paired with one, two or a pack of smaller enemies. So you had to like choose your lighting carefully, especially if you've run out of thing. Uh, everything else, which didn't often happen, but it did happen. Or the game kind of took it all away, because I'll get to that after I've described the enemies. 
Uh, then there was the most, my most, there was the chainsaw version, which was a more powerful version of the shovel guy, but eh, he just made it a bit tedious. And again, he was paired off usually with a lot faster creatures, so you could have to, a lot of kiting and whatnot. But we get to my most hated one, birds. They were birds. And usually they would alert to you before they just hit you. But there's usually about two to three seconds before they actually... Not two to three seconds. Two to three nanoseconds before they're just in your face and pecking your eyeballs out. Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock style. <laughs> and honestly, I hated fighting them. I hated their existence. I hated the fact that they were in the game. But that's just my opinion. And to be honest, they if they were used properly, as in during a fight, because they're only ever used by themselves... I never saw them in used in combination with anything else, or I've blanked it out. I've hated it that much. The only way I found that the easiest way to take them out was with the flare gun, but you didn't get much of flare gun ammo, which I can understand. It was the most powerful gun in the game, ironically, the signal flare. But the game it uses light to defeat the enemy, so the flare gun, which produces a lot of light, Hey, makes sense. Um, what was I saying? There was another thing I was going to say. There was these weird, random, black puddles of darkness. Pure darkness. They were laying about, and it was kind of like, why? Why'd you do that? Why is this here? I don't know. It doesn't. It hurts me if I touch it. Okay, I won't touch it, but my torch can get rid of it. Why need to? I can just walk around it. And a couple of times, there was actually bear traps, and... I don't know why they were there, apart from to make things annoying if you if you ever so brushed past the f air two feet around them. And I hated it. Because <laughs> they often came with a uh, friendly axe to the face. Oh yeah, the enemies do throw their axes, only the basic ones, so it wasn't really too bad in that case. But usually they threw them at the mo- they somehow knew how to- um, throw them at the perfect angle that they would hit me over things. And I wasn't happy about that because usually I'd be doing the mini games where you turn the generator on and it's a pain in the ass. Ah, uh, I've been negative about this. I need to talk some positive. My favorite things about this game are the music choices in some of the cases and a couple of the moments that actually made me smile during the point. <laughs> For the first bit that caught my eye was early in the game, there are two old men in the diner. They 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 old rock and roll men, and they make it obvious. The second time you meet them is really far into the game where you get put into, like, a crazy house, in a sense. It's like a an artist recreational recovery house, where this doctor, who has the biggest of egos, might I add, he is his main area of expertise is to help re um, people who are having issues with their work of arts, where it's either video games... Although he, the guy called video games trash... And I disliked that, and I'm glad what he got. Except that I had to fight him later, but that's a spoiler. No, no, no. Spoilers. Um, and Alan was there to try and learn how to write again. So that was the entire idea of the holiday, which turned into a shit show. And honestly, when you go to their house... That is the best part of the game. Not the travelling there. That is the worst part of the game. <laughs> the best part of the game is when you get to the house. You find yourself, you're getting surrounded. Barry's already there. Barry's is the Alan's manager slash like publisher. So he does all the... You know what a publisher does. They do all the footwork while Alan would do all the writing and looking good for the camera. So they find, remember that the old men used to be old rock and roll stars? You find their stage at a farm. And honestly, that um, 
if you've played Left 4 Dead 2, it is the end... Imagine the end stage, but in the middle of a thick cornfield with very basic seats that are, like, on stands, like you'd find in a school, in an American school track area where the football... I can't remember what they're actually called, and I'm not looking it up because it would make a lot of noise and I'd have to edit it out. <laughs> so this is really an unedited, long, ranty video. And when they put the music on, it played Ozzy Osbourne type music. And it turns out that Ozzy Osbourne is canon in the world. And I loved that. Because <laughs> the guy, Barry, had only discovered Ozzy Osbourne through a reality TV. Like Meet the Osbournes or whatever it was fucking called. So you have to do an entire fight moment listening to some really good music. And if I can find out what the music is, I will fucking buy it and I will play it to death until I hate it but even then they had a lot of ammunition and I don't know why you need a shotgun in the middle of a rock concert I know death walls are called that but they don't really mean death <coughs> and they had a whole viking vibe to them as well so viking metal viking slash Ozzy Osbourne that sounds absolutely amazing to me. I should really see if I can find something like that. The next bit, next funniest, best bit, is a little bit after it, after you fight a fucking tractor. No, a combine harvester. You fight a combine harvester because the darkness takes over things, either throws them at you or just controls them. I hated that fight because it just... It was awful. And it wasn't the first type of fight like that. They, they did about four or five of those fights. One of them where I had to... Where I was stuck on a bridge. I was trapped be with the things behind me. And all I had to do was move to the side and stare at it to death with my torch. But the, the best bit after that was when Alan and Barry got drunk. Because it was a very... It was a very real moment. Listening to Ozzy Osbourne type metal, getting drunk, and then the psychedelic dream scape happened, and it it kind of ruined the moment. Did I mention the collectathon? When I say collectathon, there was over a hundred thermoses to collect for some reason. There was over a hundred manuscript pages, which I can understand. He's a writer, so it's your writer stuff. Then there was cans that I had to shoot, which were stacked in a pyramid. I didn't even know that you could find cardboard cutouts of him. And there was also, like, you pick up video games. And it's like, where was the information to tell me all this? Was I just meant to stumble on it? One of the things that made the game kind of trivial at times was the hidden, like, caches which actually are explained later in the game. They're not just randomly placed there because the video game people said, you know what, we need some hidden caches in there. The The caches are there because of the game story, because you have to go to find this woman who's got something that's kept in the, the constant light, and it doesn't matter about that. That's a story spoiler, and I'm trying to avoid them as much as possible. The amount of stuff that you got from them usually just made the game very easy. Except in one chase scene where I got it. And it was useless because all it gave me was like two flares. I was like, why? You should, you, you make me take a nice long detour around this building. And bear in mind, Alan Wake runs like an asthmatic. He runs for about five seconds before going going... <laughs> I need to lie down. I, need, I am my writer. I do not run. You'd think after all the running he's been doing for the past week, he would have uh, figured out how to run for longer than five seconds. It was awful. This is a very negative review. I'm so sorry. This, this game... This game... was below average, and it had its moments... I have a picture of Barry 
wearing what he calls the burning eye of Mordor, and I loved that. That I loved the little references they stuck in for writers like Stephen King and other ones which I can't remember off the top of my head right now. It's, in my opinion. Buy the game if you want a one-time thing with a semi-interesting story, basic but solid gameplay-ish, because it tends to waver at times, but you don't want to have to think much more than, oh god, an enemy, get rid of the darkness, I've shot it, move on. If you're one of those people who can go through a non, a not really a replayable game, replay it and find absolutely everything, it's a good game for you to collect like hell because there is so much to collect in that game. I do not understand how people can. Uh, I, I've re put it this way. I was a collector, a collector maniac in Resident Evil 5. I spent... I finished that game seven to eight, seven to eight times, and I've still not collected everything. Oh well. Alan Wake. I'm not going to give a number to this. I'm just. I don't. I don't. I agree with some people, and in numbers, kind of too definitive. That means I have a set standard. I don't have a standard. Well, I do have a standard. If I like it, I'll play it. If I don't like it, I won't play it. If I don't like it, and I've played it. To a set level, I will finish it so I don't have to play it ever again. If I ever play this game, it means either I've gone mad, or I have become so bored, or I have completely forgotten how bad this game is. That is, it, it's so average, it's below average. The story is kind of rocky at times, because sometimes it makes no sense. It leaves you on a bit of a weird cliffhanger, which will never be finished, because the game, the other game that came out... Uh, Alan Wake American Nightmare is not a sequel, it's kind of a semi-spin-off and apparently they've changed a lot about it. Apparently it was good in that way but I don't know, I'm not going to play it because I don't want to play Alan Wake again. Uh, this has been my opinion on Alan Wake, it is below average, the gameplay is solid but meh, uh, but the rest of it is just meh, and it's just meh. He runs like an asthmatic, and that was the worst bit when you were being chased by sh everything. Even on moments where it would have been a bit nicer to run for l more than five seconds. If you want a game like this, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. But you heard me now. This is what I'm saying. I've never done a review this long. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed my, my um, tired rant. Uh, I hope you, I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time with something else. Bye-bye.